Good morning. How you guys doing today? Good. Welcome to Kensington. Let's stand and sing together. You guys ready? Come on. We're going to do this together. We might need to restart that track, though. Here we go. Let's put our hands together. Yeah. I was buried beneath my shame. All right. And who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb, yeah. Till I made it. I was breathing, but not alive. All my failures, I tried. Call her name. Then you call my name. together again. I like to call it a rhythmic applause. Yeah. I needed a rescue. My sin was heavy. But chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter. I was an orphan. But you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now you're so good to be here singing with you guys. Hey, I love this next song we're going to do, but the first line is weird, just so we're honest, because I know every time we sing this song in church, people are like, what does this mean? We're going to sing, I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. 
And first time I heard this, I'm like, I'm not necessarily in the presence of my enemies. I'm at church. The point of this song, where it comes from, is out of the book of Psalms. And it's kind of coming out of a season of lament for David. He is surrounded legitimately by his enemies. And yet in the middle of this trial he's in, he's choosing to praise God anyway, knowing that whether God gives or he takes away, he's still God and he will still glorify him. So this morning as we worship him and we sing to him, no matter where you're at today, whether you feel like you're surrounded by enemies, whether you feel like you got troubles on all sides, or whether you feel like you're on the top of the mountain and everything is great, let's take these next few minutes and really focus and raise a song of praise to God. Are you good? Are you ready? This is a response moment you can answer. Are you guys ready? Here we go, here we go. I raise it hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise it hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise it hallelujah. My
awesome. Come on, we are just getting started. This is going to be an amazing day. You're welcome to take a seat. And while you do, uh, take a look at this video. We have a very special message from uh, Kensington's new senior pastor, Brian. Kensington Church family. This is Brian. I'm the new senior pastor here at Kensington Church, and it's just so great to greet you today. You know, we are in a theme here that we're calling Above All. It comes from Philippians chapter 2, verse 9, where it says that there's one name above all other names, that at the name of Jesus Christ, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. We want to place Jesus above all. Kensington Church is about Jesus. He's transformed our life. He's brought us into greater freedom. He's the one that we just love above all. This season, we are having three different chapters to it. And right now, we're in the season called Knowing the One. We've been going through a series called Unfiltered Jesus. But next week, October 22nd, we start a brand new series called Bring It. I love the fact that throughout the Gospel of Luke, we get to see Jesus encountering all kinds of people. They bring their hurts, they bring their passions, they bring their questions, they bring their doubts, and Jesus meets them all. That's the kind of church this is. You can come as you are, bring your hurts, bring your questions to Jesus, and he meets us there. And that's the series that we're gonna be going through over the next several weeks. As we enter into the new year, we're gonna be jumping into a season called Reaching the One. Jesus' heart is to reach people for himself, that others would encounter his grace, love, and mercy. And then at the end of next year, towards the summertime, we're gonna be in a season called Becoming One, that actually by becoming one, uniting together in Christ Jesus, this is where we discover family together, this is where we get to go out and send the gospel in powerful ways. So friends, probably the best way to get involved in this season and partner with us is by worshiping on Sunday mornings and also go to the website at kensingtonchurch.org backslash above all to learn more. Partner with us, jump in, dive in to all that Jesus is doing right now. So exciting. Good morning, Clarkston. How is everybody today? All right, awesome. Um, so whether you're joining us in person or online, we are just so thankful that you're choosing to spend your morning with us. So welcome. Uh, my name is Nicole Rumble. I am the guest experience coordinator here, and this is my lovely assistant, Willa. Her name is Willa Rumble. And we are here to just share some really cool things um, that are coming up. But first, I wanted to um, show off some above all merch. That's what the kids call it. So we have these really cool rubber bracelets that are going to be available after service on your way out. If you want to grab one, just as a reminder for this next ministry season, um, what we're going through. And it's also a fun little talking point. If you're wearing it out and about and somebody's like, hey, what's that all about? You can share with them um, what it means to have, a Jesus, have Jesus above all and then maybe invite them to church. So it's kind of a cool little thing. So grab it on your way out. Um, and then the next thing that we want to talk about is our upcoming Trunk or Treat event. So this is taking place on October 29th, right um, in the back parking lot. We are throwing up this uh, service slide because it has a QR code. And the QR code is to scan if you are interested in decorating a trunk to hand out candy for the local kids that come. Um, so if you would be so kind as to take out your phone if you're available that day, scan that code, register your car. It does not have to be anything fancy. However, we do have a prize um, for the car that gets the most votes, and it's a pretty epic prize. So if you are available and would love to participate in that, we would love for you to join us. This is our biggest event of um, the fall. We advertise in every Clarkston Elementary School. They get a flyer sent home that invites them, and we did this last year and had over a thousand people walk through our trunk or treat circle. So it's an amazing way to reach the local community. And we've even had people who have attended the trunk or treat who have now started attending our campus. So it's just a really cool way to do outreach and invitation and it's fun. Um, so we would love for you to join us in that. And then for all the ladies in the place, October 23rd, which is a Monday evening, we have our uh, women's well event. 
Um, so this is actually going to be held at Bridgewood Church. If you were with us last time, we met, uh, we did a bonfire in a backyard. This time we're going to be in church. We're going to have time for refreshment, icebreaker, and uh, worship. I'm really excited about worship. And then we're going to have a message um, that evening too. So it's an amazing way to connect, create community. It's a very... Um, we have uh, invitation. We would love for you to invite somebody. At our bonfire, we had, I think, close to 40 women come, and almost half of them were brand new. They'd either never been to the well or never been to Kensington. You're close to the edge. Um, so anyway, uh, we would just love for you uh, to join us. So if you um, have somebody that you would love to invite, we have... Um, we're going to have little cards available that you can pass out. So please join us. We do ask for registration just so we can get a count and know who to expect. Um, but we would just love for you to come. So that's all I have. Enjoy your day. Um, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Kings of the past had certain rules to live by, such as come, see, conquer, and move on. Being a king isn't about status, but about control and power. Then there's Jesus. Zechariah foretold of Jesus being a king by saying, see, your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey. A sign hung above Jesus' head during his crucifixion saying, this is the king of the Jews. Jesus himself talks about his kingdom being not of this world. King Jesus had dinner with those others despised. King Jesus loved those who hated him. King Jesus spent time with the forgotten. King Jesus calmed storms. King Jesus did not lord over, but with great humility served all people. King Jesus gave his life for all mankind.
If I put my hope in anything it's you If I'm gonna follow anyone it's Jesus If I'm sure of anything it's always you think about the beauty of Jesus, who he is. There's a verse in Philippians. You heard it on the video earlier with Brian. And Paul says this about Christ. He says, therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord. And it's powerful just to stop as we're teaching about Jesus and talking about Jesus and our vision this year is to say, what if above all, above everything in our life that we focus on and we think about and we work toward, what, what if it became Jesus? Because we watch the people that are near Jesus and around Jesus and their lives have been radically transformed. And so I just want to we just want to pray for a moment and, and just ask today here and online that, that somehow we would get a better vision of who Jesus really is. Father, we ask today, um, God, we just gather as a community, man, before you. We love you and uh, we need you. And uh, we're not perfect at all. Uh, we're not religious, but we're super interested in what it means to have a relationship with you, Jesus. And so I just, I pray, God, that, um, that you help us see you in a more clear way. We love you, and I uh, pray you bless today for the next few moments. Everybody said, amen. We, uh, at the top of our day, we'd love to just take a moment um, as we get ready to take our offering right now. And I just always want to thank so many. The generosity around this place is phenomenal. Uh, we have kids going to camps. We have amazing things happening. We have uh, just all sorts of ministries from Celebrate Recovery to Marriage Ministry to Kids Ministry to... Uh, outreach to global partners all across the world even. And so I thank you for that. And, but today we wanted to recognize for a moment um, our friends in Israel. Uh, and we have great friendships, brothers and sisters in Christ all throughout the world, all over, serving Jesus, preaching about Jesus, singing about Jesus literally right now. Uh, and Nihad is one of these individuals um, that is there. He, he oversees Bethlehem Bible College uh, right in the heart of Israel. Uh, and uh, Emmanuel Evangelical Church right there, and he loves and cares for Israelis and Palestinians, uh, and so we want to support them 
uh, and their effort. Even now, they are creating shelters for people. They are providing food. They are preaching the gospel. They are taking care of people's needs. Uh, and if you haven't seen, you only have to turn the news on for half a second, what's happening. And so as a church, we want to be uh, responsible to that and responsive to that. And so there's different ways you can do that. You can just pull your phone up and do it this way. You can find this on our website. You can go to our hub. Um, and it's just an opportunity for us as a church uh, to respond to those that are under great pressure in a way that we can't even imagine at this very moment. Um, and so we just, our prayers are there with Israel uh, and all the people of that land um, because there's innocence and blood being shed all around. And, um, and so we want to be a church that is responsive to this um, in, in a profound way. And so, I, and I know we just prayed, but I, there's something in my heart. I just want to take a second and, and as the ushers are doing that, just even just say a quick prayer again um, for our friends over there, if you would. God, we pray even right now in real time that you would just be a very present help in the time of great need. Um, Jesus, that you would do something profound there. God, that we are in need of a Lord that is a loving Lord, that is a Savior. And uh, God, it's always so real and such a reminder how bad we need you. So um, Jesus, be, be our need, man. Meet our need in time of help. In your name, Christ. Amen. Well, as we start today um, and talking, we're, we're wrapping up this, uh, this series that is here uh, and talking about this reality of an unfiltered Jesus. What does he look like? What does he sound like? And uh, we talked about the fact that he was totally human. Uh, and, and we spent time there that he was totally God, uh, that he was a saving Jesus. He was our Savior, that he was a loving Lord. Uh, and today we're talking about the reality that he's, he's a servant, too. And there's a lot of amazing things about, about God that we would say that God is good. Have you ever done the thing in the church would do the call and response, like God is good, God is good all the time, right? Right, and they're there. And so this reality, but, but, but Jesus is God, and so Jesus would be good. But I would challenge the thought and say, he's a little more than good. I would, I would share today for us to wrestle with. He's great. He's pretty incredible. In fact, the angels came and they talked with Mary. And when they shared, they shared this verse from Luke. It says, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son. And you are to call him Jesus. He will be what? Great. And there's something about this idea of greatness. What does it really mean to be great? Like we have all these ideas and thoughts and I'm, I'm not, a lot of people see me and they assume, I played a lot of sports in high school, they assume I know a ton about sports. Oh, you work out or you know sports or whatever. And I, I, there, a guy will start talking to me about this and that. And I, I don't always know, but I've got a good friend, Scott, that knows a ton about him. And I was texting him like, dude, tell me your list. Like who are, who, who's, who are the goats, right? Who, who are the greatest of all time, you know? He says, well, it's got to be Michael Jordan right away, right? And he goes there and he's listing off these stats, six championships, multiple regular season MVPs, multiple NBA finals, widely accepted as the GOAT, right? Some of you are here disputing and some are like, yes, you know, and he's one of those guys that are just, he knows, he's like a statistician with this stuff. And they'd say Tom Brady, LeBron James would be there, right? The great one, Gretzky. Uh, what about Miguel Cabrera? Man, that guy's awesome, right? Uh, just retired. But I'm saying that there's this reality of what does it mean to be the GOAT? And we all have something in us that want to be the greatest. We, we, want, we want to be the best. I remember in middle school, uh, at the end of basketball practice, we would get wrestling mats and roll them up. We would put them in front of the hoop. And the reason we did that is we wanted to see who could do the most amazing, greatest dunks of all time. And so we'd run off the, the mat, and we'd be like two feet up to get on the mat. We'd get up there, and then we were like, Oh, just soaring, you know. We were like legends in our own minds at this moment, soaring through there, dunking, thinking like, can you believe that? And then we'd even get cocky to go, I think I can do that without the mat. And we'd not even come close, right? We're doing this, and we had a gym teacher, Tig Vanneman, that came in. He said, hey, what are you guys doing? You're going to get hurt. You can't do that. He goes, give me the ball. We threw him the ball. And he looks at us, and he looks at the hoop, and I thought, oh, he's going to try it. He sure does. He gets this look in his face, and he runs over. He jumps on the mat. He goes up. Boom! And he does this amazing dunk like never before, and he swings back on the hoop, holding onto the hoop, and then he falls, and we're like, oh, dear Lord, right? He's, he's going down, and he lands on both arms, and he pops up so fast, and instantly his coloring changed, and he was like a light green. And he looks at us, looks at the hoop, looks at his arms, and he turns and walks out, and we found later that week that he broke both arms. 
Literally, he never had to tell us to not do that again. <laughs> he taught us a lesson we would never forget, never wanted to experience. And nonetheless, none of us were the greatest at dunking like that. But there's something inside of us that desires this, doesn't it? Like, we want to be a great athlete, or we want our child to. Like, your, your kid shows up to flag football, and they've got on $200 cleats, and they've got all the things they need, and you've sent them to all the camps, and, and, and they get on the field, and you're like, you can do this. This is your moment. You are going to be the greatest ever. And I'm like, man, this is like for five-year-olds, settle down, you know? Like, looking at some of these parents here. And, but there's this thing that even vicariously you want to be the great, or, or like how many amazing Pinterest fails? Like you want to be a great chef or a great cook, you know, and you see this and you go to do it and it comes out totally different, right? Or you want to be a great, you know, in our, our, my arena, you say, I want to be a great speaker. I want to communicate. And, you know, sometimes people come up and they go, I know you. And I'm like, oh, have you heard one of my messages? They're like, no, you're the guy that fell off the stage, aren't you? Yeah, that happened. Yeah, I did. Yeah, but have you heard one of my messages, <laughs> right? And I'm realizing, well, I'm not the greatest, but I the greatest fall, maybe not the greatest message. And, and you know, this idea of being the greatest or a great influencer, my kids are like, man, he's an awesome influencer. I'm like, what, are the, what does he influence? Just like, influence, Dad. I'm like, I'm influencing what? I don't know, man. He's got like a million likes. Just listen to him, you know? Like, like there's this reality. We aspire to be great. And maybe we have it off or wrong where our aspirations, what we're aspiring for, we're, we're, we're measuring it the wrong way. Now, how many likes we have, right? Or how, how many people that have like, man, they watched our video or they saw this, they looked at this, or, or how many compliments we get from our work, our performance. Some of us live for this performancism. Man, we just live for people saying, that was amazing, you did so good. You are like, man, I don't know what we do without you. And you're like, oh, you do a humble response, but secret, you're like, I know that, you know. And, and it's feeding this egocentric part of who we are. We desire to be great, but I would say today that Jesus introduces a very different approach on greatness. And it's amazing because it comes up really in this moment at the Last Supper in his life. And Luke captures some of these moments in Luke 22, and I'd encourage you, it's going to be on the screen. Um, you know, I'll read. I, I, I'd love for you. We have Bibles. We'd love to give you if you don't have one or your Bible app. And I encourage you, there's something amazing. I, I just want to challenge us as a community, myself too, to be reading God's Word. There's something so prolific and profound and supernaturally inspiring and supernaturally transformative when we read God's Word. It's powerful. And so we get here and Jesus introduces something different. And so I just want to read the passage, and then we're just going to take a few minutes and dissect some of the words of Jesus, of what he thinks about greatness. Really, like, if you would, we're in the series Unfiltered Jesus. This would be kind of like an unfiltered truth Jesus reveals about you and I. It's an unfiltered truth that we see about the greatness of who Jesus is. And really, at a moment, this unfiltered truth and reality of what does it mean to be great? How can we actually be great in the kingdom of God? And so it starts here. Luke opens up, and it's by the Last Supper. He says this. He says, A dispute also arose among them as to which of them was considered to be greatest. You have to remember, this is on the heels of Jesus going to be crucified. It's his last meal. His last, have you ever had a moment at a family gathering or something, and you're breaking this huge news, or you have a medical condition, you're moving something, and all of a sudden the family gets in a debate or something, totally stupid, and you're like, hey, pay attention to me, what I just said, right? It's probably what Jesus should have done here, but it says, a dispute also arose among them as to which of them was considered to be the greatest. And Jesus said to them, the kings of the Gentiles lorded over them, and those who exercise authority over them call themselves benefactors. But you are not to be like that. Instead, the greatest among you should be like the youngest, and the one who rules, like the one who serves. For who is greater? Jesus poses this question back to us. They asked, who's the greatest? He says, well, let me give you an idea. For who is greater? The one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one who is at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. And he sets up in just literally four verses, thoughts and ideas for us that I think are going to radically change the way that we understand what it means to be the greatest. The first spot right here is that we want a title of greatness. I think all of us do. The reality is, you and I, we want a title of greatness. We, we, just, we want to be thought highly of. We want to be spoken 
highly of. We want to be looked upon like we are great and amazing and and that there's no flaws or anything at all with us. And a dispute breaks out. Right, This first verse right here, Luke goes up. He says, this dispute breaks out. He says, arose among them as to which one of them would be considered the greatest. Like, what a terrible time to do this. Jesus is saying, I eagerly want to hang out with you. I want to be with you. Something phenomenal is going to happen. I'm going to have to go to the cross. And they're seeing and experiencing all this at the Last Supper. And then they get in a big debate. Who is the greatest? Who is the greatest among this? And they're disputing. Now, some things are not up for dispute in our home anymore. Marie and I have had blissful disputes, we'll call them, you know, like moment, moments that um, she doesn't see things my way and I don't see things her way, you know, and, 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 and we get, we're passionate about that. We both, we both know that we're right, you know, so, uh, and that never ends up <laughs> well at all. You know, I've figured out, but there's some things we don't dispute about, like going out to dinner with all of our kids, Right? Because, I mean, you can do that, but you just pretty much are going to bring seven people to a restaurant screaming, crying. You lose somebody under the table, spill water, and you pretty much just took 75 bucks and set it on fire. And have the same experience, right? At home. And so we don't dispute about that, but there are things that we dispute about. And it goes beyond that. It's disputing. They're, they're, they're compare, comparing and contrasting who is the greatest. They, like, they really want to know. They're like, who's the greatest? And it's like this thing is like just this reality of comparing. Peter's like, well, I am. John's like, no, I think I might be. You know, somebody else speaks up. I, I think it might be. I think, I think Jesus really would prefer me to be the leader here, right? And, and, and they're getting in this thing. It's almost like this reality of comparison, and death comes from comparison. It's like even my mom calls it fake book. Facebook. Facebook's always like, hey, we had an amazing day. I wish, don't you wish you could be like a real-time camera and actually see and with the kids, like, if you don't sit still and take a photo right now, and then you get there and you're like, <laughs> you know, and, and, and even on the car ride home, it's like, I, you know, it's just the debates and things of, like, it would be cool if there was, like, a fake book account, and it was, like, the real side of what's actually happening, you know, on the other side of this post, and it goes beyond that, why do we do this? Why are they disputing in this moment? Who's the greatest? There's something inside of us that we position ourselves to be right. We got to be right. I mean, we just are. We, we, our opinions, some of us have the strongest opinions on the stupidest things I've ever heard of, you know? I've heard people getting in massive fights over just dumb stuff. Like, and they're like, who cares? Who's got the best sliced bread? Are you kidding me? Right? I've never actually heard a dispute on that. But, you know, but just you get my point, just silly stuff. And we're positioning and we want to be right. And have you ever, have you ever, just be honest, this is like all of us here in online. Have you ever got caught where you potentially might not be right, but you had debated that you were right, and so you were going to defend that to the death, that you were right? Even in the face of probably realizing you're totally wrong. I've done that several times, right? Uh, we've had those moments. I'll never forget, it was years, I've told the story before, where it's Speedway and it's raining and we're trying to pull out on Dixie Highway, just go south on Dixie here a little bit. And we're there, and Maria's like, she wants me to, like, you know, go right. It would be simpler. And I'm like, no, I think I'm going to go left. And she's like, no, just go right. It'd be quicker. And, and Maria, actually, I will default, is the better driver of us, too, better at directions. Um, but I found that it's taken me 20 years to admit that. It took a long time to admit that. But, but we're here. This is early on in our marriage. And so I'm, I'm wanting to go left. She goes, go right. And I'm like, I'm going left, even if we sit here all day. And the kids are crying, and she's like, that's, being, that's a real jerk move. And I'm like, I just know it's not. I'm like, if you've got to call me jerk, call me jerk, but we're going left. You know, I was like, <laughs> it's one of those moments. And I'm like, I'm going left. And she wants me to go right. And there's people there, and I'm like, realizing, and it's raining, and there's somebody in front of us that is needing to go. And they can, and I, I, I didn't mean to do this. And I'm like, I just, I, I did mean to do this. I honked the horn. I'm like, have you ever done that where you give a courtesy honk, and you're like, go, and you're trying to be, you're, go, 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 go. You know, and the person in front of me, I realized the person in front of us was somebody from church. And I'm like, oh, geez, man. You know, finally, it's like nobody's going. This lady in front of us finally pulls out. And I'm trying to go left. I can't go left. And I finally admit, I'm like, well, you know what? We're going to go right. <laughs> and I just was quiet the rest of the time. But there's this reality. We want a position to be right. Why, why is that? Why? It's, it's like an opposition to humility. It's the opposite of saying, what do you think would be the best way? There's something in our human spirit where we're just like, we're so steadfast and needing to be right, to be great, to be the right one. And Jesus goes on in Luke 22 and verse 25. 
He says, I, I, he says, the people, the kings of the Gentiles, they lord it over people. He said, they lord their power over people. You ever had somebody that where they, uh, maybe you work in an organization where somebody reminds you of their title all the time. They tell you who they are and, you know, what they're about and what they can do at all time. And you're like, we got it, buddy. We're going to staple the title to your forehead, you know. Like, we know, we know who you are. <laughs> this positional authority. And, it, and Jesus says, they lord it over people. And they use that authority to actually press people down. They don't lift them up. Uh, have you ever been around people or known people that all they do is they're, they're really, you feel like you're being used by them. You know when they call, they're asking for a favor. There, this happened early on. We were early married. Everybody was asking for favors to help move. It'll be awesome. We'll move one another. We'll have pizza. It's not awesome. The pizza does not make up for moving somebody eight hours during the day. You know, by the time you get your mid-30s, 40s, you're like, dude, we'll Venmo you. We'll Venmo you toward a moving company. Nobody wants to throw their back out. Nobody wants to do this. Nobody wants to be responsible for scratching, you know, a dresser or something. We don't want to do that, right? We're done. And, and so there's just this reality, you know, when it comes down to that, like using authority. And Jesus says also this, he says, and he treats them like benefactors. He looks at everybody, uh, the, the kings of that day, how can you benefit me? When the relationship they had is how can you benefit me? And Jesus says a great statement. He says, you are not to be like that. He's super clear. And you have to remember, this is coming in this moment. There's the Last Supper. Like we're gonna take communion today at the end of our service here. If you're online, grab some juice, saltine crackers, whatever you got. Uh, grape Kool-Aid, you know what I mean? A Ritz crack, I don't matter, right? It's this moment we're gonna take this communion, but they're, they're in this moment where we see these beautiful pictures of the Last Supper, and they're in a full-blown dispute asking who the greatest is. And he's saying, you are not to be like that. I, I, the last thing I want you to do is to be like that at all. And Jesus says something different. He says, you should be like a child in the kingdom of God. You should be like the one who serves. Jesus doesn't lord over, he lifts up. Have you also, on the contrary, ever met somebody that actually lifts you up? That every time you're around them, they lift your spirits up a little bit. We all have those people you feel literally better by being them, right? There's the people that when you run into them, you're like, oh, dear Lord. They're going to they're gonna debate, complain. And then there's the few, there are the few in the, in the good, uh, women and men in between, that when you talk to them, they make you feel amazing. You feel better. Just as the heartbeat of Jesus to lift our soul up. He says, come to me, all that are heavy, laden, and burdened, and I will give you rest. He's like, I can do some amazing things in your life. He doesn't just lift them up. He looks out for them. Like, he literally is looking out for them. Like, for, as for children. Like, like, if you've got kids, and there's tons of kids that are floating around here, like, we look out for our kids. Man, it happens all the time. Our kids, we've got two little girls. The boys are some they're younger. And when they get near, like, the edge of the road, we're all like, be careful, be, be careful, of the, right? We're like looking out for them. We look, we look like crazy people in the moment, but we're looking out for these two little munchkins to get away from the road. Jesus is no different in our life. And he loves us in a, may, a way that we can't even imagine. That he doesn't just like see us as like, how can you benefit me? He actually comes in, how can I benefit you? I love the story of the prodigal son that was taught last week. And there's an amazing statement. The father is telling the one son that's so furious. He's saying, Dad, I, I served you and I did this and I did that. And, you, and this other son, man, he squandered everything. And here you are loving him. And he looks to this son. He says, why are you mad? Your brother that was lost is found. He was dead. He's alive. But listen, I want to tell you something. Everything that I have belongs to you. I love you. This is the heart of God. Jesus is saying, everything that I have really belongs to you. All my grace, all my love, all my mercy, all my joy, everything that I have belongs to you. It's a phenomenal thing to stop and think about because Jesus is very different. He, like, he wants to give love. And there's something amazing about when we receive his love. Every time I leave my house, and I love this because I know eventually they'll grow out of it, but the girls come up, Desi leads the way, and she comes up. She goes, Dad, you got to give me a kiss. you got to give me a kiss. Dad, you got to give me a kiss. And I'm like, oh, hold on. And I turn around, and then I realize in those moments I get down and I give her a little hug and a kiss, and it's amazing. And then the other one will do it, and you know we're there doing that. And the, the day is going to come when I'm sure, like, you want a hug and a kiss? No. <laughs> I always do the boys. I'm like, you guys want hugs and kisses? They're like, no. You know. But there's something amazing about God that He wants to do this. You know. And I, I just, I, I think it's something we don't realize that we want the title of greatness, and Jesus is like, don't be like that. Be like this. Jesus wanted the title of servant. 
I love what he says in verse 27. He says, for who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? He poses a question. Is it not the one who is at the table? Like imagine this beautiful table. There's guests of honor and they're at the table. But I am among you. They're sitting here in this last supper setting. I am among you as one who serves. He serves because he's about, he's served them communion. He's giving them bread and saying, this is in my body. Remember, do this, remember to me. He gives them a cup, right? He's telling them these things. He's serving them. And he's even going far as to wash their feet and do this. It's amazing how he came to do it is phenomenal. Rather, he made himself, let me share this part of Philippians. Why does Jesus have the name above all? Why are we doing an above all theme? Here's why. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant. The very essence of his life was a desire to have the title of servant. He disrobed all righteousness, left the comfort of heaven, and came to earth for you and I. He is unlike any king that has ever walked the planet. He's amazing. He is born in a manger, not a castle. He is the son of a carpenter, not a king. Right? He goes around. He looks average. He's not GQ. Like he's sitting there serving people and healing people. And he's sitting, the scripture says, with sinners and publicans, like common folk, like you and I. Like this is who he is and where he is and this is what he's doing with his life. He is serving. He goes to a cross. The king of heaven hits the cross, dies on it, but he's resurrected all to bring life back to us. Even death, hell, and the grave can't stop him from desiring the title of servant king for you and I. This is what radically makes Jesus completely different from anyone you've ever known in your whole life. And I'd encourage you to know him better. Can you imagine if you just came home, your, your better half, you're in a relationship and they come home and they walk in and they drop the keys and they look at you and they look at you deep in your eyes. And I, I've always, I always try to do this at home, but we have kids screaming everywhere. So I'm like trying to, you know. But if I did this, if I came home and I said, Maria, how can I serve you? She instantly is going to go, what do you want? <laughs> what, what, what are you up to? But, but can you imagine if there's a genuineness to us that said, hey, how can I serve you? We'd almost think, are you okay? <laughs> Did you get in a car accident on the way home? Did you lose your job? Are you, are you having a midlife crisis? What is, what is happening right now? You're like, no, I just have been thinking all day long, how can I serve you today? How can I serve you tonight? Can I offer you a back massage? Can I do the dishes for you? Can I do this? Can I, can, what, what can I do for you, right? Like, can you imagine, how, how, what, would, what would you think if your better half did that? Nothing, you would think that's normal. Maybe that's happening all the time for each other, right? It's not. It's so foreign and so opposite when we think about this. And the unfiltered truth about us, we want a title of greatness. The unfiltered truth about Jesus, he literally holds and desires the title of servant. And so the unfiltered truth, if you would, about how do we actually become great? Jesus, who is the greatest in the kingdom? Come on, tell us, Jesus. Like, this is our question, Jesus. We're at the table, not even fully realizing you're about to go to the cross. The disciples are debating, and they're in a dispute. There's tension, there's anger, there's posturing, there's positioning. Who is the greatest? And Jesus gives them and says, don't be like these kings that are lording authority over people and only looking at them as benefactors. Instead, I don't want you to do that. I want you to love them. I want you to lift people up. I want you to be like the one at the table that actually serves are you and I a picture of Jesus at the table like the one that is serving? Are we the one that is constantly desiring to be the greatest and benefit? And it's amazing, this idea of this. I would say it's this thought, drop the title. Drop your title. Titles don't matter. Did you, I don't know if you noticed, we, we, we often don't do titles around this place because Steve Anders, one of the founders, desired for us to not have that. that he said you should be known by how much you serve. You should be known by how much you lift others up. You don't need to be known by your title. You need to be known by this concept, a towel. And it's really towels over titles, if you would. This idea is different. Jesus is sitting there, and he has to make a decision. He has to make a decision with his disciples in that moment. Am I going to flee back to heaven, or am I going to serve them in the greatest way I possibly could, which is by going to the cross, and so he pretty much takes like a towel 
instead of giving to somebody else, say, you go clean that up, you, you go do this. He takes the towel himself. And it's amazing because he takes a towel and it would have been like part of his garment, it would have been around him, and it removes part of his garment, his clothing, and he takes this and he gets down on his hands and he, remember, this is like the king of the universe. <laughs> He's there, this is God. <laughs> this is all human but all God, a savior, loving Lord. Like he is all powerful. He is the name above all names was given to him. But why was it given to him? Because he was amazing? Yeah, I totally was. Super loving? Yep. Full of authority? Totally. But he was madly in love with humanity. And he came to serve. Jesus says, the son of man didn't come to be served, but to serve. And he's telling his disciples, who's the greatest among you? I would say it's the one, not at the table, you would think that. But he says it's different. It's the one that's serving at the table. And he washes his disciples' feet. He takes their dirty feet. You ever envision this? We always envision this like moment where these disciples are like foot models or something right now. They probably have like toe fungus and dirt everywhere. And somebody needs to get that one. Some fingernail clipper, toenail clippers. You know what I mean? Like there's probably that thought. But Jesus gets there and he begins to wash their feet and clean their feet with part of his own garment. He's serving them in a profound way. And this idea of taking towels over the title. And this idea of, can you imagine if we just dropped the title? Like, who cares who the greatest is? Can you imagine if we just dropped that all together? And say, we're just gonna, we're gonna drop the title. We're gonna pick up a towel here. We're, we're gonna serve. We're gonna do that. Because there's a decision to be made. It's amazing. Jesus sets us up well in Matthew. He says, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom, what? Come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. And the Father's will that the Son would come and serve. Jesus is saying to his disciples, you want to know what it is? I'd really love for you to drop the, I'd love really love you to just drop the title. Who cares who the greatest is among you? Just serve one another. Help out, love one another when it matters most, right? Like just, just take your towel and serve and drop the title. It doesn't even matter at all. But they're so caught in this. My first job in ministry for me was... Uh, a pretty amazing job, and I loved it. It was at the River Church, and, and the gentleman that I worked for, uh, he had a policy for all of us that we had to do is on Friday mornings, so we'd come in and we'd all scrub toilets. And he'd say, if you can't scrub a toilet, you can't preach. You can't scrub a toilet, you can't serve, can't scrub it, and we'd have to do that. And this was like an amazing thing that we did. And it was an annoying thing that we did <laughs> at times to us, but we realized, looking back, you ever had those moments in life, you look back and I realize, I'm super thankful that happened. I'm super thankful that I realized that, that scrubbing toilets or cleaning or picking up a towel to scrub the urine that would be around urinals or to clean up the bathroom or to wipe everything down, that would be an amazing thing to do in the kingdom of God. And I, I got these lights. Where's my friend Dave Collin? Dave, where are you at? Around, oh, right there, right. <laughs> happens all the time, these lights. <laughs> He's like, wait, right, two feet away, buddy. <laughs> you know, Right here. I love it because Dave and the amazing team on our portability team help set everything up. All the amazing experiences your kids or grandkids or people are having right now are in large part due to Dave and his team. Every, every amazing thing that we're experiencing throughout here in large part because of Dave and his team. And they pick up towels. Isn't it cool? It's like, and I'm telling you, I, I want to encourage you, man. If you want a life-changing experience, Drop the title, quit worrying about being great and all this kind of stuff that I've been wanting to serve or help out. I love this place. Go see Dave and jump on portability even once a month. It'd be an amazing thing to be a part of. And you pick up a towel and you drop the title and you serve in a way and you begin to impact people's lives. And I would say this, Dave, I'm not kidding. All the amazing things that happen around here, like we have baptism coming up November 19th, all the amazing things that happen around here, even like a couple of months, several months ago, the baptisms were unbelievable here. That was in large part because you guys picked up towels and dropped titles. And you came and you served to get everything together. And nobody ever knows that, but the King of Kings sees it. Jesus sees it. And it's amazing for us to stop and just consider this. And this is like really good news. And Jesus makes really profound statements. He says, if you're willing to lose your life, he goes, I'll tell you something, you'll find it. <laughs> what? Mark Twain says this, the two greatest days of your life, the day you were born, the day you figure out Why? What are you putting your hand to? What are you serving? How, how are you making an impact in this world? God has uniquely placed you and created you to make an impact in this world. Unlike any other person ever put foot in this planet, you have a specific, unique way to make an impact in this place. And Jesus says it comes by serving. If you lose your life, you'll actually find it. 
It's an amazing thing. So what are a couple good ways to go about this? You could pray about it a lot. You could just start praying. Just say, God, show me where I can serve. God, show me how I can be a help. God, show me today how I can be an encouragement to other people. How can I serve you? Can you imagine our posture was, how can I serve you? And Jesus says, when you do that, don't worry. In your mind, in our paradigm, we're going to think like we're going to lose. We're going to miss out on benefiting ourselves. We're going to be exhausted. We can't do this forever. Like these thoughts will go through our mind. Jesus says, that's not the case. When you serve, when you actually pour out, I'm going to pour back in. When you lose your life, Jesus is saying, I promise you, you're really going to find it. When you're serving others and you're loving and you're lifting up and you're helping others find great success, you yourself will find success. You yourself will find and experience love in a way you never have before. That's what's so profound about this. I love Jesus says, and Luke talks about him, he says, each day Jesus was teaching at the temple And in the evening, he went out and spent the night on the hill called the Mount of Olives. What was he doing? He was praying. He was praying what we just talked about earlier. Father, I don't know everything about your will, but whatever your will is, I want it to be done. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. I can get God on earth as it is in heaven. He's praying about that. He's talking about that. I think it's amazing. Steve Andrews, one of the founders here, I hung out with him. He came to our, our boys' football game Friday night. It was so amazing. We're hanging out there and we're talking back and forth. And he has this statement, this phrase that he says, he goes, I may not be much, but I'm all I think about. (laughs) And it's true for many of us, right? But he'll ask, he'll ask me all the time. He goes, how's God speaking to you right now? What's God asking you to do? What's, What's God asking to be part of? He's so big on believing that everybody is invited to the mission of Jesus Christ and that everybody has a specific important role to play in the mission of Jesus Christ. Can you imagine if we just start praying bold prayers? God, how can I serve? How can I, how can I serve around here? What if your job was to pray every day? And we're so excited. We got, by the way, we had our lease at this place. Clarkson School has been so good to us. Extended it because they're doing this huge remodel and all sorts of stuff. They're going to take great care of us, and they're extending our lease all the way uh, through 2025. Uh, and not that amazing? And they're going to take good care of us. And so we're excited about that. I, last time I shared that, I said 2015. And people were like, yes, wait, what? <laughs> So 2025, let me be clear on that. But can you imagine just God's asking you to pray every single day? Just pray like nonstop, if you would. Pray all the time um, just about a building for this place. Be driving around, looking, and whatever God's asking you to pray about. And then be just super devoted to people. I think when you look at the life of Jesus, you can't help but see he's in prayer. Your kingdom come, your will be done. God, what's your will? Well, son, he's telling Jesus, I want you to serve mankind. Jesus says, okay, I came to serve, not be served. And Jesus was the greatest. There's no doubt about it. He was undisputed by far. But it's amazing to think, well, I'm not, we all say, I'm not Jesus. (laughs) We know. (laughs) For all of us, right? I say that to myself, I know. But we can be a little more like him. We can live a little more like him by the power of his Holy Spirit every single day. Martin Luther King Jr. had an amazing quote. He says, not everybody can be famous. This is true. But everyone can be great. Why? Because greatness is determined by service. Greatness is determined by service. It's not how great you are. That's how great you serve. It's not what you did for yourself, but what you begin to do for others. This whole paradigm Jesus brings up. And it starts with this idea of taking a title that you hold on to, how you see yourself, how you envision yourself, and you take this and you just say, I'm just going to pick up a towel that, went to, that, went, that was to you, by the way. <laughs> I didn't get it far enough to you. Oh, that was my son. I see now. You definitely need to be picking up a towel, right? <laughs> I'll, throw, I'll throw a couple more. You guys behind there, too. This idea of grabbing this towel. I want to tell you, as the band comes out, and we're going to take communion together. It's an amazing friend of mine, John Martin, who I've talked about. He got baptized up here. Some of you have been praying for him and with him. And the same deal, I can't even see. John, are you... Right around here. Where are you at, John, right now? Right here, man. There we go. You guys are like ninjas in here, man. I can't see anybody. So John's like right there. And it's amazing. John has been battling with cancer for a long time. And he had chemo and all sorts of different treatment. He went for a pretty, when I say pretty, like intensive surgery, man. Like life or death. And I I love the fact that you're here today and you're cancer free. And it's amazing, man. Watch. You know, what God has been doing... And for me, it's 
you don't have to talk to John to follow his journey. It's unbelievable, you know, what, what's happened. But one of the most unbelievable things that I think I discovered about John is my friend Matt and I went out to lunch with him. It was probably just literally a couple days before you're preparing for the surgery. And we sat there. We went to Deer Lake Inn on Dixie Highway. And we got like salads and burgers or whatever, right? And we're sitting there eating. We're talking and, and we're just talking to John and ask him how he's doing. And he's being honest. He's like, I'm really afraid, but I'm, I really feel faithful. You know, I think God's going to do something to help me. And he says, you know what? He says, Jeremiah, he says, I've been thinking. He says, I've been praying and I've wanted God to like rescue my life and heal me and help me and make me whole. We all do. When we get sick and something's wrong, we all pray, God, help us. God, meet us right now. And it goes beyond that. He says, the number one reason I really want to be healed, Jeremiah, is because I've really realized Jesus has radically transformed my life. And I, and I just want to be able to be healthy again so I can serve the church. I said, are you serious? I, and I'm thinking for a split second, I'm, I'm thinking, if I survive cancer the way John did, I want to go to the Bahamas. <laughs> right? Or I, I want to, I don't even know if I like Disney a ton, but I want to go there again because that's what everybody does and something celebrates, right? I, Right, I, I want to I wanna do that. And John's like, I just want to serve the church. And if we get a building, he's like, I, I'm going to be retiring from firefighting. I could be your full-time facilities guy. Nobody else is allowed to apply for facilities but this dude, right? <laughs> he's earned it, okay? And I'm just, I just, I, I, John, when you share those, I've been blown away. And I've, I've reflected on my life often because we all struggle to serve. We're like, no, nah, we're the greatest. <laughs> Somebody else can do that. Somebody else has got that. And Jesus is like, do they, Jeremiah? Because before I had to march across up a hill, I decided to teach my own disciples that the greatest thing I could do is pick up a towel. And I dropped the title of King of Heaven, Creator of Heaven and Earth, the Alpha and the Omega. Right? I, I dropped all that, Jeremiah, and I picked up a towel to serve. Like, And Jesus is asking us in some ways, if you're doing something more important, then, then, then don't serve. But if there's something you could realize today Jesus had the most important mission the world's ever known and he comes to serve and as we get ready to take communion today I'm assuming everybody everybody got the cup and the, that came in and uh, hey does anybody can I grab an extra cup by the way do you mind if I grab one and we always talk for an extra minute because these are probably some single handling the most difficult things to open up aren't they that's okay and so Jesus is sitting there. Let's reflect back. So he's there at the Last Supper. This whole story, it's the Last Supper. That's where he is. Thank you so much. And he's there, and they're disputing and debating and all this kind of stuff, but he, he wants to serve them. And the amazing thing about Jesus is that you and I are always on his mind and his heart. And he came to serve. And maybe today you say, I'm not strong enough to even serve anyone. Well, Jesus can make you strong. Maybe you need to allow Jesus to serve you today as we take communion. Maybe you need to invite Jesus into your life. Maybe you need to ask Jesus, please help me in a way that I need to be helped. Or maybe God's burdening you and saying, how do I, I need to go talk to Dave. I need to go jump on portability and serve. I need to go talk to John. I need to go take John to lunch and hear how did Jesus transform your heart that you wanted to heal all so you could serve and help? Tell me about that, John. What did Jesus do in your life? So before this dispute broke out, Jesus laid and modeled the way. In Luke 22, verse 19, he says, and he took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it. And he gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Luke records and says in the same way after supper he took the cup saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood which is poured out for you he says I'm doing this for you they don't even understand the cross was for you and I in remembrance of Jesus I pray today that the words of this song as you hear this 
that our life would be all hail King Jesus, that at some point we would say, you are maker of heaven and earth and you came to serve me and you love me. Jesus, teach me to be more like you. Teach me to serve the way that you serve. Teach me to love and live the way that you love and live. Father, we ask today that you just keep opening our hearts and our minds and our spirit to who you are, Jesus. I pray that you help us. God, help us serve like you. Help us surrender to your Holy Spirit that it will empower us and transform us and change us. God, give us a spirit like you have, John, that we pray for healing, we pray for help from you all so we might serve others and find beautiful joy and passion and mission in it. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing here in our lives and in this community. May you bless in your name. Amen. Let's stand together as we sing.
sing it out. Sing it out. All hail the Lord of heaven and earth. All hail King Jesus. All hail the Savior of the world. Jesus, we're so grateful for you, for who you are, the way you love us, the way as our King, you came to serve and give your life for us. May we be a people that, I, I just, I don't know, that we'd be changed by that. That we would serve you in return and serve your people and your kingdom. Moving us today, not just in this moment, but the rest of the day, the rest of the week. We love you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your love for us. You are our King. Amen. We're so glad that you guys were with us. Go and have an incredible week.